Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cup, I am Penge and welcome back to MMORPG Tycoon 2 and we are back in the world of Cupboard Quest and things look very very good. I do like what we've done with Cupboard Quest so far. So we've built kind of all of the stuff down the middle here in the one area that we've got control of. The area did come with the gigantic mushrooms and the gigantic trees but we've built all these other bits and bobs. So we've got our little place in the middle, our town here which looks very lovely. That's not really a town I suppose, it's not big enough to be a town. Our, um, our settlement I suppose. So it's got all the shops and the inns and some houses and all that kind of stuff. It's got a henge which is very important. It's got a gigantic well and a gigantic mine cart and then there's a path going up this way through the lovely Crystal Canyon. Little rest sort of stop there if people want to have a little rest. And here's some kobolds to fight as we head off into the desert. So this is an area where people can go and get some XP and some kills if they so wish. Over there in the gigantic trees is a spidery area. Obviously spiders would hang out in the trees. And then down here logically by the water are some crocodiles for people to go and kill as well. And it's going very well. I think it's going quite well indeed here in Cubber Quest. The only thing is um, our subscribers seem to be a bit lower. I don't know if something has gone a little bit a little bit kind of one colloids with that because I think at the end of the last part I'm fairly certain we had over 200 subscribers. We might have even had 210 subscribers. I seem to recall commenting on it going up but whatever the case it's come back down to that. I don't really know why but I'm sure that will continue to creep up and it'll all be fine again. So we've got quite a lot of people 156 subscribers, 92 people online, and whilst there are a few people heading off to fight some monsters and get some quests over here, yeah, there's what, one, two, three, four, five, sort of six or seven people going up that way. There's not really anyone going that way. Nobody seems to be heading toward the spiders. Everyone is just round here in the town, and everyone just seems to be chatting. <laughs> They're kind of just, they're coming here and they're having a chat, they're meeting people, they're having lovely conversations with their buddies, they're forming new friendships and new groups and all that kind of stuff, and everyone just seems to be using it as a bit of a sort of a, a social tool, which is brilliant, absolutely. If that's what people want to do with it, if they want to log on to Cupboard Quest and meet up with friends and meet up with new buddies and have a little chat and, you know, just, just enjoy being social, that's absolutely fine. I am on board entirely with that, and I think because I was poking around with this just before I started recording, just to get you know get an idea of what else we could do in the game. I think there is a bit down here that tells us, here we go, yes. So our total subscribers, 156. We've got 22 achievers, we've got 23 killers, we've got 27 explorers, and 55 socializers, which I think absolutely is, is evidenced by the fact that lots of people is hanging around having a nice chat. So at the moment, connected, 31 socializers. Okay, right, so there we go. Now, one thing we are gonna do, just before I, uh, just before we begin actually getting on with the main bulk of stuff, there is an advertising bit just here. Now, I, I don't know if this is in the game or not. I don't know if it's an implemented thing, but let's have a little look. So start a new ad campaign. It costs a thousand. That doesn't seem that bad. So what do we want to do? So magazine advert is seven days. Oh no, oh right, the cost has gone up. Oh, okay, that thousand was like just a holding thing, okay. So we could put something in a popular gaming magazine for three and a half grand for seven days. Okay, that's quite a long time because we're only, we're not even halfway through day one and we've created all this. So seven days time, we're going to have quite a lot of stuff going on. So a uh, magazine is three and a half. A website is seven. I imagine that's probably going to get more reach. Uh, and then a game expo is, that's going to be extortionate, 21 grand. <laughs> Host a booth at a large gaming exposition to show our game to lots of new people. I, d I don't know what we'd show. I don't really know what we'd show. I mean, it's very good what we've got right now. It's lovely what we have, but I don't know if it warrants a, a stand at a game expo. And then free game vouchers cost three and a half grand. Ooh, give people a copy of our game for free. I imagine we make quite a bit of money from the signups of that game. So how about, it's either gonna be a magazine or a website advert. Let's go for the website, look. Seven grand, we've got 68 grand. That's probably a good investment. If it gets lots of people in, that will be fine. So let's start that ad campaign. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna look at is, if we take a look at all of our player characters so far, they all look kind of the same. They look like little tiny Viking people. So some of them have got the darker hair and some of them have got this lighter hair, but whatever the case, they're all wearing kind of pointy hats and they've got hammers and other weapons and stuff like that. So yeah, they're all kind of, and you've got a kind of ax type thing, but they all look more or less the same. And I didn't really know why this was. I assumed that that's just what the character model looked like, but apparently that is not the case. If we go down to design, 
we've got ourselves these two characters that we started with. So our two characters that people can choose from when they join are scouts and warriors. But we have unlocked a third character slot. Now, I don't know how this works. I assume we can pick from a list. So I think we'll click it and find out. Also, we've unlocked two different monsters. Uh, oh, and no NPCs. So we can add some different monsters in as well, which sounds very good. But right now, let's give ourselves a new person here. So this is a Triant. Uh, can we change that? Can we become something else? No, we can turn you around, Mr. Treeface. But other than that, we can't do much with you. Okay, so people can log on and be either a little Viking warrior or a little Viking style scout or a gigantic tree person. Okay. <laughs> So, um, so there you go, so they've got these base hells and manners and things. We won't fiddle about with those right now. I don't think we'll mess with those. You can go to their abilities. You can add, can we add an ability? Oh, we can add a target sort of effect thing. Hang on. So someone does flare, self mana. So it costs a bit of mana to activate a flare and the target's health is, is reduced by two. Can we add another thing into here? Oh, look at that. Target mana minus... So you, you can use a flare on people and it damages their health and their magic. That's great. Okay, yes, I like that. Yeah, apply that. Absolutely. Okay, that's wonderful. And I notice here... Oh, hang on. Hang on, there's some... There's tree people. There's tree people already joining. Hello, tree people. Samaran is just wandering over here to see his group of buddies. Hey, guys, I'm a giant tree person. How are you? Oh, they're all, they're all joining in. They're saying, hey... So the new character models, you look great, you look like a tree. So let's have a look. So yeah, you're, you're Samaron the Treant, your real name is Mini Cobb, and you're a socializer, of course you are, and you're colorblind, okie dokie. Um, and you've got yourself a, um, a budget of $19, bank balance of 634. I don't quite know how we know that, but okay, that's fine. Um, yeah, look, and everyone just goes in and is just, is just socializing. And that, that's marvelous. Okay, good. So we've got tree people in. Now, what I did notice on here, if we click on the Triant, Triant, um, there is a model editor. Now, this is intriguing because um, it was mentioned, I think, in the comments, and I think Dave might have said that there's a lot you can change. I wonder what we can do with this. I mean, there's a lot going on. There's heads, torsos, tails. I mean, can we give you a tail? Do, do trees naturally come with tails? Yeah. <laughs> ah, oh, yes. Okay, so you can have yourself a tail. Um, that's a bit ridiculous. That's not so bad. That looks like kind of like a plant bulb or something. And then we can change colors, can we? So we can make that a sort of slightly greener color. Oh, this is, this is very exciting. Arms, can we change your arms? You could have different types of arm. Okay, so you've got that arm right now. Okay, so what if we changed your right arm to that sort of thing? That is terrifying. Oh my goodness. Or a kind of paw. Oh, this is very good. Or just that. I mean, the fact that that is sort of like a hand is quite useful. There's all sorts of things. What's that? That's just a different type of paw. <laughs> okay. Uh, legs. Stance. Humanoid and run. Oh my goodness me. A quadruped. <laughs> yes. All the tree people have to do this. Oh, that's Yes. Can we have that? Can we have the tree people galloping around the place on all fours? <laughs> oh, that's quite a fundamental change, isn't it? But that is brilliant. Look at that. Because that's how trees work, obviously. Oh, I can't. They're tree people. They're supposed to be big and tree-like. Um, but do you know what? That's fine. In the world of Cupboard Quest, trees are like this because we said so. Oh, there's so many things. There are so many things. I suppose you could. Hang on. Can we change the name of what it is? Oh, we can. So you could, we'll leave the tree people in for now, but we could for our next one, whenever we get another one of these, we could just build something entirely new. We could just go, right, okay, you start out like a tree. No, no, we're going to build a gigantic, I don't know, rock-faced monster man or something like that, because there seems to be a lot of options in there. You can change the head. Oh, hang on. A hat, you say? Can we have... <laughs> That is brilliant. Just nestled, <laughs> nestled atop his sort of leaves there. Oh, yes. Oh, my goodness. That's like a giant cavalier type hat thing. Cowboy hat. I mean, it doesn't really go very well on top of its head. <laughs> but this is, this is wonderful. Um, okay. I don't know what that is. What is that? It's like a cap of some sort. 
Oh, that. I like that. I quite like that. It's like a chef's hat almost. It is, it is a chef's hat, I think, because it's got the, the sort of carrot thing sticking out. Oh, this is this is ridiculous. I do like that, but I think we'll save that. Um, I don't necessarily think it, it needs it. Can you shrink this as an adjust? Can we change the size of the hat? Oh, we can. Oh, my goodness me. You can move it around and everything. <gasps> Oh my word, this is this is a wonderful thing. We can give them a little hat. Okay, okay. I mean, do we want them to wear hats? Um, yeah, do you know what? Can we have one of them massive? Can we have a spiky hat? Can they just wear those for no discernible reason? There we go, look. So we'll give them kind of weird, <laughs> weird spiky hats. Okay, okay, right. So now all of the treants are going to be wearing weird spiky hats and also they're on all fours. I mean, that's not gone very well for you, has it? Uh, you seem to have... What's going through your head? Oh, it's a bit of grass. Oh, it's a bit of the scenery. Hang on, if we move that on, is that just sort of going to move out the way? Oh, it's gently sort of swaying in the breeze. That's absolutely fine. Okay. And um, one thing I am thinking is that we've got quite a lot of people here doing the socialising. Maybe they would like to socialise in some buildings. So we've got this one place here. This is just the inn, which, can we rename the inn? Um, I'd like to be able to rename the inn. That'd be good if we could. I don't think we can. I know you can rename a lot of things um, in this game and we'll come to that shortly. But yeah, I don't think we can, I don't think we can rename the inn, unfortunately. But um, maybe, maybe they could do with another inn. Because if they're all socialising, and that's where they go to socialise, that might be quite a good thing. So let's go to buildings. Let's get ourselves an inn. We've got one of the big ones. That's a big inn just there. Why don't we do a smaller one? It's inexpensive, but it serves a smaller number of players. But I quite like the idea of just having this inn here on the crossroads. Just here. So up from the respawn point, we could just put it over here. So where is the front door? Um, I would say the front door is there. I would say that is the door. So can we just get that in the right position so it doesn't destroy any paths or anything? So if we pop that there, the ground sort of levels out a bit, that appears, I assume one of our staff is going to come out and click this to activate it. I think they might have already done it because people have just gone in. Okay, there we go. Oh, yes, we've got another little place to socialise. That's very good. Um, I'm still not entirely clear on what the difference is between an inn and a tavern. I think the inn, maybe you can stay in the inn, whereas the tavern, you can't. You can just go and get drunk. So I think maybe we should put one of these in as well. They serve as a social hub. Players who are feeling lonely will visit them, try to meet new players. So yeah, let's get a tavern in as well. Another tavern. And maybe we could put that one... Can we put it down here, maybe? Put it down into the villagey sort of the, the area over here. Maybe we could do that. So right, so rotate that round so that is facing there. There we go. We'll put that there, drop that in, and now we've got ourselves another little drinking place as well. So many places for people to go and socialise. Marvellous. Okay, so we've got that in. Um, now we need to go and do something with our monsters. Because the moment we've only got three, we've got kobolds, we've got spiders, and we've got crocodiles. And I think in here, we went to here, we can have two new monsters that we have unlocked. Oh, we unlock them at subscriber levels. Ah, so when somebody gets to level four, we will get ourselves a new player character type. But at the moment, presumably when someone got to level two, I guess we got two new monsters. And then at three, we'll get two more. Four, we get two. Five, we get two. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at the amount of monsters we can have. Okay, let's see what the first monster is that we get. And it's a bear. Okay, yeah, that, that's sort of okay. It's not overly exciting. So a crocodile, a spider, a kobold, a bear. And what's this one going to be? Oh, yes, a skeleton. Okay, that's good. I like that. I like the skeleton. Not so enamoured with the bears. So this makes me think, should we, should we change the bear? Should we fiddle about with the bear a little bit? and just see what we can make. Because I mean, who knows? I mean, that's sort of skeleton -y. I don't know what that is. I'm not entirely sure what that is. I'd like it to be a sort of a humanoid thing. Um, a ghost. <gasps> yes. Hang on, or a social thing. A social bear in a dress. <laughs> I mean, I'm already up for this. <laughs> this, is the... this is brilliant. It's a happy bear with a terrifying face. I do like that. I like the ghost option. That's good, with it just sort of floating around. 
Um, okay, so yeah, let's go and have a look at what we can do then. So, I mean, there's all sorts of different torsos going on. There's loads of different things. Um, I mean, I don't know what's going on there. That's a bit weird. That's made of a, some sort of giant acorn or something like that. Don't know what that is. Uh, yeah, that's a bit, that's a bit scary. So how about, could we have ourselves, uh, what's that head like? It's not attached to the body, which would befit a ghost. That would work. I kind of, oh my goodness, we're a giant ghost floaty chicken. <laughs> oh yes, we can have a floaty ghost chicken. Uh, do you know what? I'm, I'm all for this. I'm all for the floaty ghost chicken. Uh, right. Okay. The ghost chicken does not seem to have the right sort of, um, the right colours to it. We'll sort that out in a second. Is that the right body we want for a floaty ghost chicken? That sort of trees, that's weird. Uh, I don't know what that is. Um, that, I mean, that would work. Is there a feathery looking one? Is there anything that looks a bit like feathers? There. Yes. Okay, that's good. Right, a tail. Uh, it might have a bit of a tail, I suppose. I don't know where the tail is appearing. Uh, maybe it doesn't like a tail. Okay, arms. They're not kind of bird arms, are they? Well, they have got... Yeah, not really. But, I mean, it wouldn't have arms like that anyway. It would have wings. Have we got any wings in here? Can we give it... Wi yes. Okay, so it's got wings. And then those feet are probably absolutely fine. Those feet are probably absolutely fine. Okay, right. So <laughs> we'll go for this. Um, right, the colours are not right. So it's going to have um, really kind of crazy purple eyes. Like that. Yeah, there we go, like that. And that colour, what can we make this? Can we make that, uh, I don't know, what kind of ghosts are sort of, maybe we can just make it very pale colours. So the, hang on, maybe we'll give it red eyes. So let's give it that colour there. Give it glowing, terrifying red eyes. And then that, not brown. Oh, that's just terrible. Um, how about a green? Yes, like that. Um, how do we colour its beak? Uh, oh, like this. <laughs> I don't even know what that's supposed to be anymore. I'm not entirely sure, but that that is a wonderful thing. Um, okay, can we position its head the tiniest bit? Can we bring it? Oh, um, I want it to be floating a bit, though. I liked a bit of the floating head, just not as much as it was, because it was quite off into space. There you go, look. That's sort of like a floating ghost bird. <laughs> Floaty ghost birds. Um, okay, I'm quite happy with that. Um, so I think we need to... Oh, no. oh, I didn't apply the floaty ghost bird settings. I thought it would retain them. Okay, right. Hang on. Let me go and rebuild floaty ghost bird. There we go. I've rebuilt floaty ghost bird and I have added a very, very important new feature. And that is this very stylish pink hat that floaty ghost bird loves to wear. So now I've applied it. I've applied the transformation. So it should retain that. Um, yeah, do we want to keep these in? I think they're both fine. It's fine. So floaty ghost bird can both swipe and maul people. I mean, I would love to be able to sort of peck at somebody, but um, yeah, I don't know how to add new ones in here, but that'll do. So yeah, let's not call you bear because that, that's just not right anymore. Uh, well, I mean, We've been calling you Floaty Ghost Bird anyway, so uh, let's go for Floaty Ghost Bird. And there we go. We've now got ourselves Floaty Ghost Bird, <laughs> which is just, that's brilliant. Okay, so we've got ourselves skeletons and Floaty Ghost Birds as some new sort of uh, new monsters we can put in. I mean, people aren't really bothered about the monsters, are they? Nobody seems to be too fussed. Everyone is just enjoying socialising with, with an occasional few people going up to kill some kobolds. I don't think anyone's taking on the spiders. The spider's just there going, yeah, well, we're fine. We're absolutely okay. The crocodile's down here. No one's really bothered. So maybe, maybe we need to put in a slightly nearer area of floaty ghost birds. Maybe there can be an infestation of them over here somewhere. Ah, now, can we put in a house of some sort? Could we put in like a big old house and then maybe have the story that that house has been haunted by floaty ghost birds? Maybe we'll put it over here because that's not too far away from our sort of little settlement area. We'll put it over here. Um, okay, right, scenery. Let's get ourselves a fancy, there you go, set dressings. Okay, yeah, there, look, these are big old house type things. That looks like a kind of castle-y type thing. So maybe we could put one of these in. If we come down quite low to the ground, um, yeah, how about then, if we put that down, there's a front to it. So let's put this, I don't know, there, that'll do. So drop that in then that will appear. And then we need to get a path going to it. So let's get ourselves a little path going through here. 
Can you go round that rock? Because that would be nice as, a, as an exciting feature. We'll drop something else in as well. And that could lead up to the door. So intersect building. So we'll do that, look. So the path then appears to this little house here. And then in scenery, we can add bits on. So let's add some blocks to this place to make it look a little bit bigger. So uh, yeah, how about if it's going to be a castle, it's going to need to have a big kind of spire thing on it, isn't it? I mean, how tall can we go with this? I have no idea. Oh, is that as tall as we can go? And I'm like, oh no, no. Oh, oh, right. Okay, right. We can make a gigantic. Oh, it's huge. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, we can make a gigantic towery type thing. Um, and then I feel like it needs to go out sideways a bit more and probably out the back a bit more. So this is a sort of, this is a haunted house. That's that's the plan there. Uh, maybe we have reached the limit of blocks that we can add. Can't seem to add any more blocks. Okay, that's fine. And um, we've got a door just there. We'll add a door on the side here, maybe. So pop a door in there as well. So several doors. Okay, that's good. Right, what are the scenery is there? We want spooky scenery. Um, uh, oh, oh, yeah, can we put that in the in the background? Drop in a gigantic, terrifying sort of white ghost tree. Um, and then everything else we could do is being a little, tiny bit smaller would be nice. Um, some, yeah, some spooky, some rocks. There you go, that's a rock, that's nice. Rock can go there. Um, and then maybe a bit of, bit of yeah, just, I don't know, a bit of scenery for that. Is there anything like graveyardy? Anything to do with, uh, yes, skeletons or undead things? Anything like that? It doesn't look like there is. Um, no, what's that thing? Uh, okay, that that's weird. I don't know what that is. Uh, I don't think there is. There's, um, well, there's, there's, there's some skeleton things there. We've put them up near the cobbles, haven't we? Let's drop one of those there. That'll do. And then we'll put ourselves, I don't know, like a log or something just there. That'll do. Is there anything else that looks immediately obvious? No, that could go in the cobbled area. I think someone suggested that, actually. We've put those things in the cobbled areas. Uh, and we just put a few boxes around the side. Look, they might have loot in or something like that. And maybe this, actually. Maybe we could put that there. And that could be a thing they could... Maybe they have to light that and light this or something as part of a quest. But then around this spooky house, we want to get ourselves an area of so let's set a monster zone <laughs> of floaty ghost birds okay so let's place an area of floaty ghost birds around <laughs> look at them in their hats <laughs> that is uh, that's that's brilliant uh, that's okay that's that's made my day right floaty ghost birds are in and now we need a uh, a quest giver to maybe stand here and then just say, oh, you lot should go and deal with the floaty ghost birds over there. Because that's fun. Um, search for my watch. Go to a tavern, enjoy the scenery and return. Okay, that's fine. Go to scenery, enjoy the scenery. No, no, no. New target. Go there. Go, yeah, thin the floaty ghost birds. Go to the floaty ghost bird zone and kill eight of them. Okay, yeah, I'm all for that. And then add a new quest. Go to the kobolds. Add a new quest. New target again. Go over there. Change task. Kill 16, kill 32, kill 4. So he's got a number of quests. Two of them to do with floaty ghost birds. One to do with kobolds up here. And then one is just a nicer sort of go to the tavern and enjoy the scenery kind of thing. Okay. Can we rename the zones? Floaty ghost bird zone. Oh, no, we can't rename the zones. We could have called it like the... <laughs> I mean, to be fair, that's perfectly good. Floaty ghost bird zone is brilliant. But we could have called it, you know, the spooky manor house or something like that. Um, okay, never mind, never mind. Uh, let's just move time on a bit just to get that all in existence. We're going to need to see somebody come over. One of our one of our staff needs to come over and activate things, I think. Uh, let's move time on a little bit quicker. And I think Floaty Ghost Bird Zone is active. Okay, let's have a look. Oh, the Floaty Ghost Birds aren't float, they're walking. Oh, hang on a minute. No, 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 I thought I'd set them as ghosts. Hang on a minute. Floaty Ghost Birds. Yeah, you're floating there. Model editor, humanoid ghost. Uh, but they are definitely walking on their feet. Do you know what? Early access, it's okay. I mean, we know in our heart of hearts, they are floaty ghost birds and they are very much floating. What is this? <laughs> what is this? What have we created? What is this silly thing? <laughs> and I do like its head isn't attached. That's good because, you yeah, know, the ghost elements and everything. Okay, well, there we go. So we've created some floaty ghost birds. Um, I mean, yeah, I'd be quite happy to finish off now with floaty ghost birds. That's it, game done. But no, I think there is still there's still more for us to do. There's there's 208 people online right now. 
and most of them are here. The, look at the tavern. <laughs> the tavern is just, it's going great guns. How many people can it hold in a tavern? That can hold a thousand people, can it? A thousand people can fit into there. Was that the TARDIS? Okay, so a thousand people in there and that can hold uh, 200. Okay. Okay, right. That's interesting. Good grief. <laughs> so many people. How about then, uh, we could create another monster area over here. I think people are just sort of, people are hanging around here a bit too much. I want to get them away, come away from the cities. So um, let's put something down here. And then down the side, we could put an area of skeletons because we have unlocked skeletons now, haven't we? We got those as well. So we've got some skeletons. So we could do something with them, put them down here, say, and then, yeah, then uh, I know, build something next to it. Ah, yes, I was thinking, yeah, of building our little, a little sort of walled settlement down here and making it. There were some buildings that looked really nice. Where are they? Set dressing, set dressing, set dressings. Uh, there, look, these buildings look a bit. They look dwarven. Let's be honest, they look like dwarf buildings. So yeah, they've got it's all made of metal and stone and stuff. Maybe we could have a, like a little dwarven settlement just off the road. We bring the road down here and have a little walled settlement with the dwarves in. Because you can build walls. Now, where are they? Where is the wall building tool? There was a bit where I could build walls. Hang on, it must be around here somewhere. Let me see if I can find it. There it is. It's under paths, weirdly enough. But okay, fine. So let's build ourselves a little sort of walled off area down here. And we'll call this like a dwarven city. So, uh, okay, the walls just work like paths then. Okay. Uh, yeah, then, oh, it's all over the place. Joe, you know what, it's fine. We'll have, we'll have, oh, hang on a minute. If we could do this right, we could call it. I mean, are they going to, if we finish up there, I don't want it to be a big place. So we could call that something like, oh, hang on. Whoa. Oh, that is wonderful. Look at those. The other thing is they're quite close together. I didn't realize you were going to build bits on the end. I just thought it was going to be some walls. But no, you've, I want a path to go through there. <laughs> How are we going to do this? Hang on. We might have to destroy that. That might have to go away. Yeah, get rid of that. Oh, that's a shame. Oh, that looked quite good. Um, so what we're going to do is, yeah, I quite like the idea of having it. It was sort of hexagon shaped, wasn't it there? So if we start here, this is where we're going to come in. So right, start here, then go up to there, then go to there, then go to there. Then we need to leave a gap for the, for the side. So like that, like that. So double click there. That should leave plenty of room for a path down the middle. Yes, there we go. Right, so now we can have a path running through the middle. And I mean, I was going to call it Hexagon City. This side's gone a little bit wobbly. <laughs> we'll, we'll just call it the Dwarven City. It's fine. So now we can get a path going in here and we'll put stuff on either side. Yeah, okay, this is good. We'll have a main path going right through the middle, actually. Let's just run that right through the center like that. And then uh, dwarves will probably have grids. Dwarves would have grids, I think. They're kind of organized people, aren't they? So let's have this. So we'll bring that down to there, that across to there, that to there, and that up to there. Yay, okay, right. And now we can go in and get ourselves these things. Again, I'm, I am I mean, oh, actually money's looking okay. We've got 513 subscribers, good grief. Um, set dressings. Let's get these sort of, dwarven looking buildings in um yeah I, I do like these they look very good so yeah we've got one there so we'll plop that uh just there on that side lovely and the ground is going to keep changing itself as we go along that's all fine can we drop that one oh hang on the door's not in the right place um that one in that corner lovely i like how they change that's got a massive cog on the top that looks very good where's the doors oh the doors are on this side um okay we'll put another one there and then another one will line up next to the, oh it's a bit weird uh that one there oh and can we fit that one in is that one even going to fit into this place here i don't think that's going to kind of slot in quite nicely is it never mind we'll just put it on this side of the road um these are actually costing quite a bit each time i possibly should make this the last one for a while <laughs> let's put let's put that one up here uh where's the doorway there so let's put that one there and this place could then do with some stuff to, you know, for you to want to come here and do something with it. So how about then we get ourselves some buildings? Um, so let's get ourselves, yeah, maybe maybe another inn would be a good idea. 
maybe just a small in. So drop a small in over this side. Uh, yeah, we'll put that there on that corner. So we've got a small in and then maybe a couple of shops. So yeah, we'll get ourselves a regular shop uh, and uh, yeah, the blacksmiths would go well. Dwarves, dwarves are good at making things. So yeah, that will suit that will suit quite nicely. Hang on a minute. Uh, where's where's the front of the blacksmith? Where's the where's where are the doors? There. Okay, right. The ground might have to level out a little bit for this one because that's going to look a bit strange. There we go. And yeah, just get a regular shop as well. Just a normal little shop, just there. Um, and we'll put that one. Uh, where I don't know where the front of the shops is. Do you know what? We'll just put it there. That'll do the job. Okay, so we've got ourselves a little sort of dwarven city type thing, which I do like. When the towers aren't very dwarven, they're more, I would say they're more elvish, but that's good. Uh, let's get ourselves, uh, let's get ourselves a, where are they? A guard, was it? Yeah, so let's get ourselves a guard. So a guard can go here. We might need another guard as well, possibly, just to help people find their way. We'll put a guard just there, and then we'll get ourselves a quest giver. In fact, hang on, let's put the area of skeletons in first. Let's zone in a skeleton-y area over here, like so. So let's just say there's a few skeletons in there and it's a bit scary. So we'll do that. And then we can have a quest giver plop you just there. And you could say, go and kill some skeletons. So locate the small inn. Look at the letter, sorry, go to the small inn. Discover more beer, <laughs> go to the starting point. Okay, discover a moldy plum. No, desist this madness. Go and kill some stuff, would you? Kill eight skeletons and then go there and new target, go here. Kill eight crocodiles might be a bit much. Let's start with four. Kill eight skeletons and four crocodiles. We'll turn it down to four because you're just starting out. In fact, the crocodiles were quite tough, weren't they? Kill one crocodile. I don't know how tough the skeletons are. I'm not entirely sure. So hopefully people will start making their way down here now toward our lovely little dwarven settlement. Oh, that looks very lovely. Check that out. That looks great. We do need something by the by the doors just here. I'm not really happy with the fact that there's no, there's nothing there. There's a bench there. I want that bench. That would look good. Um, oh, let's, can we place a henge? Are we allowed a henge? No, for some reason we are not. I don't any scenery of any kind. What's going on there? Why can't we put scenery down all of a sudden? Are we out of bandwidth or something? Uh, hang on a minute. Hang on. Maybe that's just gone weird. Hang on. Why can't we put scenery down? Rocks? Oh, no, we can. We can do that now. Okay, it was just having a bit of a moment, was it? So if we build, say, a rock there, and a rock there, and a rock there. Look, so it looks like it's been built in the rocks, which is good. We will not get to you, though, Mr. Guardface. Cause that would be unfortunate. There you go. So some rocks around the bottom. I like that. And then, yeah, a uh, henge. Because I do like a henge. We'll stick a henge just there. So it looks nice. And then in terms of anything else, I don't think we need much else, do we? Is that bench? Oh, yes. We can have benches. Right, let's put a little chair. Even though these are massive compared to the player characters. Let's put them there. So a little bench for people to sit on as well. So hopefully at some point, people will drag themselves away from our wonderful place here. <laughs> <laughs> our 213 online people that are mostly gathered here and they'll um, they'll go somewhere else. There's a skeleton. I just thought we'd come down and have a closer look at the skeletons, but there they are just sort of wandering about this area. I mean, this area is a bit boring. It's a bit drab over there, but I do want to keep a bit of money. I don't want to spend all our money on you know, nice, pretty things and then go, oh, I've got no money left to buy a new area or do this or do that. However, we must have got 100 players to level two because because now our goal is to get 100 players to level three. So I assume we've completed the prior goal to that. That's very good. Okay, so maybe, maybe now, I mean, what's the next thing for us to do? What is the next logical thing? We can't do any more of the design stuff because we need to get subscribers to level four. Although, yeah, we're not, I mean, that's not too difficult to get to, I don't think. So um, yeah, we can't get any more monsters either. NPCs we can't get any more of either. Um, I am thinking that maybe we just drop a few more quest givers round just to actually get people to have some quest to go out and do some fighting because people are gathering round here. <laughs> I mean, it, I, I, I do like it. I like the fact that everyone's using it as a bit of a social tool. But, you know, in the end, you're not going to get all your XP from just doing emojis and standing about. You need to go and, 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 you know, kill some stuff. So let's put that just there. 
Let's get a quest giver in. Oh, look at that. And everyone's gathering around the quest giver. Hello, quest giver. Give me quests. <laughs> Do it now. Um, oh, look. Defeat the floaty ghost birds. And then also go to the tavern. Okay, that's going on about floaty ghost birds. Can we change that to the skelly bellies? There we go. So go to the skeleton and kill one skeleton. That can be your goal. Just kill one little skeleton. So hopefully somebody should head out this way. <gasps> Was that someone coming out this way? Wharfcon. Okay, marvellous. Uh, right, Wharfcon, you're on your own there, which is which is unusual for, for Cupboard Quest. <laughs> it's normally everybody's chatting with everyone else over here. Are you okay? Okay, on a total whim, I've just gone into here, into the network bit, and just had a look to see how our network was doing. And our network is struggling somewhat. So if you look up here, our uplink is, is teetering on maximum bandwidth. I think we need to add another uplink. So these cost a thousand a day to run, but I think we need one because that's that's not encouraging, is it? It can cope with uh, something out of 50 and it's teetering on something out of 50. So I think we need to put another one of these in. Now, I don't know if it matters where you put one. I don't think it matters at all where you put it because everything is connected up with cables anyway. So if we put it here, does it make any difference? Oh, someone just died. <gasps> A floaty ghost bird just killed somebody. Oh, I mean, they are tough. That's the point. Let's drop that in there. So that can come down. So now, has that helped with this one a bit? Has that helped? Or is that, that one struggling as well? That's on 50 out of 50 bandwidth. And that one is teetering on maximum. Okay. I don't know if that's good or bad. Also, is that connected to the network or not? I don't know. I'm not entirely sure. I mean, do we need to build a cable from you and back out into the main grid? There we go. No bandwidth source. That's always a bad sign. I've connected up to the thing. Um, okay, hang on, hang on. Has that now started working again? Uh, right, come out of that. Click that. Has that now joined in? Yeah. Are we, are we hammering the... Are we got too many people? Is that the problem? Is that the problem? Oh, yeah, look. Stuff's going on. Stuff is going on. Our buildings are vanishing in and out of existence. That's not going to make people very happy. Don't tell me we need another one of those things. <laughs> Oh my goodness me. Also, that capacitor, has that got anything in it? Nothing at all. Is it connected, however? Do we need to, oh, we need to connect that up. That's unfortunate. That's unfortunate because, yeah, we, we, that wasn't plugged in. Okay, never mind. Right, undo that. Is that now storing stuff? Oh, it is. That is now storing some stuff. Okay, marvellous. Right, okay, so it's, it's filling itself up. Lovely. Yeah, why are the buildings flashing on and off? Why is that building flashing on and off? As though it's not got enough bandwidth, yet we're, filling up with bandwidth in our capacitor. Unless that's keeping it alive. I don't know, but that could be quite useful. That thing could be good. So yeah, that's topped out and that's topped out. Is that what it's providing or what it's using? I'm not entirely sure. I'm not entirely sure, but that thing there is accruing bandwidth. So that I think means that we're okay for that now. Uh, yeah, we might've been all right before, but you know what? We've got another one in now. It's all good. There's so many people. Somebody has done subbed. Who just unsubbed? What What is wrong? What is the issue with this? Why is there a problem? Um, okay, right, now let's come out of this. Come out of network for a second. Um, we have had a few requests to put some some names of people in. Um, somebody who is a, a sort of a long-standing uh, sort of uh, supporter of the channel did say they would like to be a wizard. Unfortunately, we don't have wizards in yet. We've got scouts and warriors and tree people. Um, when we get a wizard, I will add you in. You know who you are. However... I think we need to add Dave. We need to add Dave from the Wii because Dave gifted us this game. And yeah, if it wasn't for Dave, we wouldn't be playing this. So let's find, let's find a person that can be Dave. So what's Dave going to be? Which one of our people is Dave going to be? Is he going to be a scout? Is he going to be a warrior? Or is he going to be a tree person that walks around on all fours? I think we know the answer. Dave, you're going to be a tree person. So here we go. Let's just pick, I don't know, you at random. That will do. So Sil Pal. Um, oh no, it's a yeah, player type killer. I don't see Dave as a killer play type. Um, an achiever. Uh, can we get one of each of these? You're a killer. Uh, you're a killer. Okay. Analysis, standing desk. How do we know these things? How has that come to us? Analysis, cute hair. How can we see Wendy McDonald? <laughs> How? I don't understand. Um, you, socializer. 
Yeah, I like that. I like that idea as a socialiser. I mean, yeah, I've attended Dave's RimWorld streams where there's RimWorld happening in the background and Dave talks about some other stuff. So yeah, a socialiser would make sense. So let's call, let's have Dave, let's have Dave Wee Hours because, you know, that's quite good. So that, we know who that is. And we'll favour it to you, Dave Wee Hours. So there we go. So we've got Dave in at least. So that's marvellous. Um, now, can we see, how do we look at our, um, how do we look at our favourites? Because we did have another favourite as well, didn't we? We did have the initial guy who joined. I can't remember the name of him now, the person who joined first. But yeah, we did favourite them as well. But I don't know where they might be. Can we view a list of favourites? Is it here somewhere? Thoughts? No, no, no. And probably no. Um, okay, no, I'm not entirely sure then. I don't know how we find a list of our favourites. Do you know what? I've just thought it's coming up to the end of day one. Wasn't there some sort of streamer going to connect at midnight? I think somebody's going to connect. Someone streamy and important is going to connect momentarily and have a play of our game. That might see a great big boost in sales or whatever. There you go. A streamer has connected. Asden, that was it. Hello, Asden. Welcome back in. How are you? Let's have a little look. Where have you gone to? There you go. Look, so you've had a day at work or whatever and you thought... Oh, I've had a tricky day at work. Do you know what I'm going to do? Cupboard quest. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go and do some cupboardy questing. So, Asden, how are you? Let's have a little look. Can we click on you? There we go. So, you're a level two warrior and you're socialising. Well, of course you are, because <laughs> that's what everybody does. Okay, so your stats, your... Yeah, your the stats are pretty good. Stats are pretty good. Right, hang on then. Hang on, dismiss that. So, the streamer has connected... Uh, web influencer, Purple Kitten. There you go. Right, where are you, Purple Kitten? You're a VIP. Let's hope that this actually goes very well. So there you go. Let's put on a good show for the viewers. Um, okay, right. So I want to clear that message now. I want that to go away. I don't want to dismiss it because I want to be able to come back to them at a later date. Uh, they've popped into the tavern for now uh, or the inn or one of those. Whatever that building is, they've gone into it and they're doing something in there. Okay, right. That's good. I think maybe, yeah, let's move time on. Let's just absolutely sprint time on and we'll see what Purple Kitten thinks of Cupboard Quest. And it is 3.34 in the morning, I assume, and the streamer has disconnected. Purple Kitten has logged out. They seem to have a good time. That will be good exposure. Streamer satisfaction, five. Estimated new subscribers, 500? 500 new subscribers are going to come in from, from Purple Kitten or whatever you were called. Kitten Purple. Oh, thank you, Kitten Purple. That is, that's wonderful news. Okay, right. Dismiss that. Now, I think, I think things, yeah, things are looking great here. Things are looking good. I mean, nobody is killing anything. Nobody is killing anything at all. <laughs> There's all these crocodiles down here just milling about, just, you know, feeling pretty invincible. The skeletons are just feeling sad and unloved. Um, so, I mean, people are going up to kill the ghost birds, I think. We've seen some people try to take them on. And that might be a bit tough. I do not know. Um, people are up here. Look, oh, somebody's logged out. But people are up here fighting some of the kobolds and stuff. So, um, yeah, people are doing some other stuff. But mostly people are just hanging about here. I mean, it, pretty much everybody. I'd say probably 200-odd people are around this area. <laughs> There's like a handful of other people around the place. Um, what I did notice was on uh here no npcs there we go you can add in an elite monster elite monsters are individual larger stronger named monsters these monsters can be the targets of quests so we could create ourselves a gigantic floaty ghost bird if we wanted to or a gigantic kobold or whatever and you have just killed a kobold well done kolber kolber the kobold killer that's what they'll call you they'll call you that okay that's very good. Yay. So you've done a thing and you'll be full of happiness because you've just done something good. You'll be really joyous. Yeah, you're, you're enjoying your time here as well. You're, you're happy. You fought a month. You've picked up a quest. The scenery is really nice. Um, okay, what we're going to do is we'll put some things into the kobold area, some scenery items, and then I think we will wrap things up. But yeah, there's some scenery bits I thought might look quite good. So where were they? They were down here. Yes, yeah, so sort of these things here. This thing, that looks sort of koboldy. I mean, the scale of these things is all sorts of all, all, all over the place. But, I mean, that's massive. A kobold is tiny compared to that. We're living in a land of giants. But we'll put one of those down because that looks like a fun thing to have. And then a sort of a giant spit thing as well. We'll put that down. 
Um, I mean, they, they are, they're just huge compared to the actual characters. They're just vast, vast things. Um, and then, yeah, we'll just, we'll dot a few of these things around as well. We'll just sort of put a few of those around. We'll twist that one around and that one, put it sort of facing that way. A couple of these sort of terrifying kind of skull type things, drop those in just to give it a bit of color, really. There's nothing really over here. There's nothing here. Um, what's that? What's that thing just there? That is some, I don't know what it is, someone hanging their washing out on a sheet, on, on a line. Uh, okay, they're drying their sheets. Okay, the cobbles are doing some washing and that's fine. So that's there as well. Maybe the cobbles can have a little sort of area where they can all gather around and sit about and talk about cobbled life and stuff. I don't know how difficult it is to be a cobbled, why people always want to come and kill you in the head, that kind of thing. So we'll drop you there and we will drop you... Oh, twist it round, twist it round to about there. So that just adds a little bit of colour, doesn't it? A little bit of something else. Um, what's that thing? Don't think we need that. Yeah, that's... Oh, we didn't get to our farm area. Oh, spiky things. Big spiky. They're gigantic spiky things. Uh, okay, we'll put a spiky thing there. And maybe a spiky thing around this side because they look good. So yeah, a couple of spiky things. Uh, are they more spiky things? Oh, yeah, loads of spiky things. Um, let's put a spiky thing just there. And then let's put one on this side as well. So yeah, just as a sort of a warning. So keep out, cobalt here, danger, here be baddies. Um, that's a massive uh, catapult thing. Don't think we need that. Um, and then, yeah, these are sort of war machine type things. These are war machines. And that's the sort of stuff we're going to get in. These lovely looking things. Oh, they look really nice. <laughs> Less little towers and things. That's lovely. Okay. So we've got all that in. That is wonderful. Hopefully that might make the um, the cobbled area a little bit more appealing. Hopefully. I mean, there are, there's a steady stream of people coming up here. We have gone past 1,000 subscribers, which is very good. 1,017. Now, will it stick on that when we come back next time? I don't know. But what we'll do is we'll finish up for now because we've done pretty well. We've created some new zones. We've put some new scenery down. We've got ourselves a little dwarven city here with some skeletons that nobody seems to care about right now. Maybe we'll connect a path to the skeletons at some point. I don't know. Maybe we'll bring the skeletons round the city as though they're sieging the city. <gasps> that could be quite good. Hang on. Let's do that right now. Let's do that now because I'll forget for next time. So um, yeah, set monster zones, skeletons. Asden has logged out. Cheerio, Asden. Thank you for playing. So yeah, we'll put the skeletons around the outside like this. Uh, so yeah, just around the edge. And then it can be as though they're attacking the city because they're on the sort of the walls. So we'll make sure they don't go inside the walls because that would be unfortunate. And then we'll erase this whole chunk of it down here because we don't need any of that. So get rid of that. There we go. Oh, I quite like that. And that's not smooth enough. That's all sorts of all over the shop. There we go. Lovely. So now they can. it can be like they're attacking the little sort of dwarven city and you have to go and help them. That could be the story behind it. Okay, right. I'm happy with that. Now I think what we'll do is we shall finish up because, um, because yeah, we're at a good point. Things are looking okay. 1,041 subscribers, lots of people online. Everybody here is just doing socializing. Some people are killing things occasionally from time to time. And our crowning glory, I think, is that we have created the, uh, the, the floaty ghost birds that aren't floating. But still, never mind. They are a... <laughs> They are a wonder to behold. They're certainly something to behold anyway. So, um, so yeah, we'll leave it for now and we shall come back and uh, and carry on the story of Cover Quest another time. Hopefully you are enjoying this. I really hope you are because this is, this is brilliant. This is all sorts of very silly fun. If you are then, please do leave a like. That would be very, very lovely indeed. And if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here in Cupboard Quest. No, it's not in Cupboard Quest, is it? It's in, uh, it's in MMORPG Tycoon 2. Of course it is. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard, and I will see you next time. How are we doing? You've just circumvented the queue. You, Sarah, cheat. Oh my goodness me, there's 12 million people that just come in from an airplane. Are you a skeleton? Are you just Skeletor? Is that all it is? You, madam, you are a pain. You are a scourge upon this earth. People are urinating on the floor.